there are three measures of variation that we're going to talk about calculating. There is the range, there is the variance, and there is the standard deviation. So the range is one that we have already talked about. We talked about the range in the first section when we looked at constructing a grouped frequency distribution. So as you hopefully remember, the range is found by taking your highest value and subtracting your lowest value. So while we'll talk about that in this section, there's nothing new for us to learn about the range. For the variance, we're going to use the symbol S squared. S squared is going to stand for variance. Now the formula for variance is a formula that looks very difficult, but in actuality, once we start working problems, I hope that you'll see that the formula is not that hard to work with. I'm going to write the formula down here. I will give you this formula on your test, but you do need to know how to use the formula. So be sure that as we're writing this formula down that you are writing it down in your notes so that you will have it that you can reference the formula as you're working problems. Now again, I'm going to show you how to work with this formula when we start working examples, but this formula will calculate variance for you. For standard deviation, as a symbol for standard deviation, we just use an S. And in order to calculate standard deviation, we are going to simply take the square root of the variance. So you can see that calculating the range should be fairly easy. Calculating the standard deviation should be fairly easy. But the work in terms of, of working out a problem is really going to be here with the variance. Okay, so let's look at a couple of problems. All right, so our first example has six data values and ask us to find the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. So I'm going to go ahead and do the range first because we know that that's fairly easy. The range is going to be the largest value, which would be 87, minus the smallest value, which would be 19. And so we're going to subtract those two numbers, 87 minus 19 and that's going to give me a range of 68. So that essentially tells me about the spread of the data set, that it scans or spreads over 68 possible values. All right, so let's look at the variance. For variance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jot the formula up here so we can kind of look at the formula as we go. The formula requires that we calculate two sums. Remember that this symbol is a summation symbol. And so I have to add up two things as I work this problem. Okay, so the first one that I'm going to work on is this part that's inside the parentheses. Alright, so that just tells me to take my x values, my data values, and add them up. Alright, so I'm going to do that by putting this in column form. So I'm going to make a column for my x's and I'm just going to copy my data values here 53, 42, 87, 54, 23, and 19. And then when I'm done I'm going to add them up. And that's going to give me the number that's going to go inside that parenthesis in the formula. All right, so I'm going to add those numbers up, and I get 278. Okay, so that takes care of that sum. So the second sum that I'm going to work on is this one. 
This one essentially tells me to go to my x values and square them and then add them up. So I'm going to do that one by one. So 53 squared. Now if you have a squared button on your calculator, which you should, you can use that, or you can type in 53 times 53. All right, now these numbers may get kind of large, but let's just, we'll be careful as we write them down. 2809 is what we should get when we square the 53. When I square the 42, I get 1764. Eighty-seven squared is seventy-five sixty-nine. Fifty-four squared, two thousand nine hundred sixteen. Twenty-three squared is five twenty-nine. And nineteen squared is three sixty-one. And now I'm going to add up these numbers, and this will be the first sum in the problem. All right, so adding my numbers up gives me 15,948. All right, so now I'm ready to actually plug into my formula. So the easiest way to do this summation parts is to remember that because you're subtracting, like this part is a subtraction, because you're subtracting, you want your bigger sum to go first. All right, so of the two sums, the 15,000 sum is larger, so that one's going in first. And I'm going to subtract off the 278. Now note that the second sum has a square on it. All right, so I'm going to put that over here and then I'm going to divide by n. Now n, remember in the mean formula that we looked at just a few minutes ago, it's the number of values and that's the same here as well. So if you don't remember that, make yourself a note, n is equal to the number of values. And so in this particular data set, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to put a six right here. And then on the bottom of the fraction, we're supposed to do n minus one. So six minus one would be five. Okay, and so now we need to put this in our calculator. All right, the ideal way to do this is all at once. So I'm going to try to write down what you need to put. Um, this may be something that you need to um, email me or touch base with me if you're having difficulty because you definitely need to be able to get your calculator to calculate this value for you. All right, so I would use parentheses around the top. So I would put it in with a parenthesis and then the 15,000. 948 minus 278 and then use your square key if you have a square button use that if you don't remember we talked about using this caret key for a power okay either way whatever your calculator does mine does just a square so I'm just going to put that then you're going to use your divided by key and enter in your six and close the parenthesis. Then you're going to use your divided by key again and put the five. Okay, so hopefully you've got your calculator handy. Grab your calculator, try this. And like I said, if you're not able to get it, then you need to touch base with me in some way so that I can help you with your calculator. All right, so I end up with 613 and I'm going to do two decimal places, so 0.47.
and that will be my variance, 613.47. Okay, now remember, standard deviation is found by taking the square root of the variance. So once you have the variance, finding the standard deviation shouldn't be too difficult. So we're going to be doing the square root of 613.47. And so again, using your calculator for that, you should get 24.77 when you round it to two decimal places. Now, standard deviation, let me just say, is a measure of how spread out your data values are. So a standard de deviation that's 24 is, is pretty large. And so what that's telling us about the data set is that the numbers are fairly spread out, that they're not close to the same value um, they're not close to the mean, but they're actually fairly spread out in the data set. Okay, so let's go through one more example of this, just so that you have another example to look at. All right, we're going to do the same thing. This time we have seven numbers in our data set. All right, let's start with the range. So remember that the range is going to be the highest value, which I believe is 34 minus the smallest value, which looks like 19. And so I'll subtract these two, and this tells me that my data set spans a possible 15 different values. All right, so let's work on our variance. Remember that we need to do two sums, and we do this in table form because it's a little bit easier that way. So I'm going to write my x values down. And I'm going to add them up. And that's going to be one of the sums in my variance formula. All right, so when I add those numbers up, I get 181. Then we're going to go through and we're going to square each of the numbers and add them up. All right, so I'm going to do 33 squared, and that's going to be 1089. And again, as these numbers get larger, you just need to be careful that you're typing them in your calculator right and that you're writing the answers down right. So 22 squared is 484. 27 squared is 729, 34 squared, 1156, 21 squared, 441, 19 squared, 361, and 25 squared is 625. All right, and once you get all of those written down, then you're going to add them up. And this is going to give you the sum of the x squareds. All right, so adding those numbers up should give you 4,885. Okay, so remember how your formula goes. I'll jot the formula down again at the top. And remember that the first part that you're working on is the subtraction of your two sums. Remember that the larger sum should go first because you will usually subtract larger minus smaller. So I'm going to do 4885 minus 
the 181. Okay, remember that this second sum has a squared attached to it. And we're going to divide by the n. n is the number of values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. n is 7. And then on the bottom, we're going to do n minus 1. So n minus 1 would be 6. All right, so again, we need to put it in our calculator. All right, so you're going to put it in, starting with a parenthesis, 4885 minus 181, either the caret key or the squared button, whichever way you do a power of 2, divided by 7, close the parenthesis, and then divided by 6. All right. So, again, try this. Make sure that you can type it in. If you're having trouble, let me know. All right, so you should get out of this 34.14, if I'm rounding to two decimal places. All right, and then remember, standard deviation is found by taking the square root of that variance. So if I take the square root of 3414, that gives me 5.84. And note that that's a much smaller standard deviation than what we got in the last problem. So remember that standard deviation gives you an idea of how spread out your numbers are. And if you look at the numbers in this particular data set, the range is much smaller. Okay, so if the, we have a smaller range, we should expect to see a smaller standard deviation. All right, and that concludes our presentation on calculating measures of variation.